So I am joined by three special guests for a UEFA Women's Champions League edition. I can't lie, I was super excited when we heard that the Champions League was going to continue throughout the summer in Spain between San Sebastian and Bilbao. Let's just check in on you guys and see what everyone's been up to. So Helen, we'll start with you. How have you been training during this time? How's it all been for you? Yeah, it's been tough, I'm not going to lie. Um, but thankfully, my husband and I decided to invest in a treadmill at the start of lockdown. So obviously having the two kids at home, it's difficult sometimes to get out and train, especially when I've got no other childcare. So it's given me a bit of a mental break from looking after the kids as well. So I've been able to keep myself quite fit, but I am ready to go back to playing football again. Now it's a bit boring staring at, you know, a little screen on a treadmill for, for hours on end. Have you been able to keep in contact much with all of the players? Yeah, so we've had programmes from Watford to get on with. Um, we've had Zoom quizzes, Zoom meetings, Zoom this, Zoom that. We've seen a lot of each other on, on those kind of chats, obviously, as most people have, have done. And we've got our WhatsApp groups as well, both for Wales and Watford, that have, have been uh, lively at times. At the start, it was, it was quite busy, but then obviously as people got used to spending time on their own, I think those, those quietened down a little bit. but. Now there's a bit more talk about returning to training and you know qualifiers hopefully going ahead in September for Wales. They've, they've livened up a little bit again and I think everyone's just looking forward to getting back and actually seeing each other face to face, even if it is from a two metre distance to begin with. I can imagine. Now, Katie, what about you? There must have been quite a buzz around Swansea uh, being champions. Have you sort of kept that going? How, how have you been training? Yeah, I mean, to find out we'd won it, obviously we were delighted, you know, not the best way, but you know, we only had a couple of games left. So, yeah, we were obviously really pleased. Um, like Helen said, initially everyone's buzzing. Um, it has died down a bit recently because, you know, there's been not a lot we can do, not a lot really to talk about. So when we first stopped, everyone was trying to keep fit, you know, didn't know if you were going to go back into playing games. So that was really important. But after that, was, we've kind of taken time off to recharge a bit, a couple of weeks. Hopefully we'll be back training now this month, next month, ready for um, the next season. So yeah, it's been good. When you found out you were going to be crowned champions, like where were you and what was your reaction? Because I suppose it is a very strange one because you know you haven't quite finished the season, but equally you do still deserve it. I was downstairs actually, just like flicking through Twitter and it came up BBC, like crown champions for us and the, obviously the men's league in Wales. Um, no one had said anything in our group chat, our coach didn't know, I don't think, we're not aware of anyway. So straight in the group chat, sent them the screenshot and everyone was just buzzing then. We had a Zoom call and stuff to talk about it, but obviously we were, you know, really pleased. We didn't really want to drag it on into the summer and then go straight into the league in September. So yeah, we were all um, really excited. And you, you actually work with the academy as well. Has, has that been strange? not being able to, to be in and amongst the kids and, and making an impact like you do? Yeah, I mean, that's part of my, you know, routine. I go there every Tuesday, Thursday, coach from under 10s up to under 16. So that's definitely something that's been, you know, part of my life for a while now and such a sudden stop to it as well, you know, going and then the next week there was nothing. And in fact, where we actually train is a field hospital now. So not too sure when we'll be back there, but... Yeah, it, it is strange and I know that they'd be missing it as well, you know, that some of them just play football every day, you know, the youngsters. So, yeah, I'd be glad to get back in and see them again. And Shiv, uh, you're at Hibs and Hibs have been a very successful club. They've also made, really made players that have progressed on to do big things. How has it been for you and, you know, how much are you looking forward to just getting back to it now? Yeah, I think it was hard. We only played one game um, before it stopped, so... I think playing one game and then the season getting cut was quite tough to take. I think it's getting close to going back now, so it's quite exciting to try and get back to normal and play a little bit of football again. And what, what kind of training have you been able to do yourself? Uh, I've gotten access to a gym in my house, so I've been quite lucky with that. So I've been doing that and then trying to mix it up with running. And then close by there's a football pitch, so just trying to mix it up because it gets boring. Um, you get bored of doing the same stuff. So. I think mixing it up is quite important. It's that being part of a team that, that you really miss. I mean, how much you you guys just, just looking forward to getting that team banter back and that team cohesion. You sort of take for granted seeing those people three, four, five times a week. Um, so when you suddenly go three months without seeing any of them, it's quite strange. So yeah, that, that you know, as much as getting back to actually playing football is, is a big thing. I think that social 
side of it as well is really important for your mental health and just general sanity really.